Yeah, there's there's a lot here to unpack. Um, and you see a lot in the news. And we said, how can we help? And we believe that there's no one company to do this. We have to all come together as an industry and have it as an industry solution. And we need to agree as an industry, what is that standard? Welcome back to Digital Innovations with me, Jeffrey Ken. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about a brand new product launch uh, coming from the, the wizards at Blockchain for Energy Carbon, uh, which is aimed at helping decarbonize the planet. And uh, to do that, I'm joined by Rebecca Hoffman, who is the CEO of Blockchain for Energy, the consortium itself, and uh, the uh, company that participated in the development of Blockchain for Energy Carbon, uh, Camillo Mejia, who is the CEO of Innovate AI. Welcome to you both to Blockchain for Energy, or sorry, to Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. <laughs> I got Blockchain for Energy on my mind today. That's great. We want you to have it on your mind yes. always. It's, it's, a, it's a really good, uh, really good um, uh, innovation. It's something that's very central to my work, which is uh, digital innovation and uh, decarbonization. Uh, but let's first begin with uh, some uh, personal introductions. Rebecca, if you don't mind, just a, just a hint about your personal background. Yeah, sure. Um, so I am, like you said, Rebecca Hoffman. I've been in the industry over uh, the energy industry over 20 years. Um, I have gotten to touch and see and had the privilege of being a part of the full value chain. I think that's part of what has helped in, um, you know, this love for innovation and how to help the energy industry in multiplicity of ways. And that's why, you know, carbon is is dear to, to the heart of trying to help the industry. It's perfect for co um, a collaborative consortium. Yeah. Um, and what does the, uh, the the actual consortium itself do? It's what's its purpose? Yeah, so Blockchain for Energy is actually a nonprofit uh, member-led organization by the energy industry leaders mm -hmm. who have come together to advance their digital transformation journey. Our mission is to drive industry innovation by pushing beyond traditional technological boundaries. We achieve success through synergizing our efforts and expertise to create a trust network where collaboration is the catalyst for significant value creation. We are redefining operational efficiencies and fostering growth using automation, robust standards, and cutting edge technologies for faster adoption. We are testing the limits of possibility and we like to say we're delivering tomorrow's solutions today and we're doing it together and getting that agreement up front. It, yeah. It's just been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. Yeah, and now we've had several press releases um, and one has been this B for E-Carbon right before Sierra Week. Oh, brilliant. We're going to talk at length about the actual uh, product itself. Uh, Camille, yes. perhaps you can share a bit of your background. Absolutely, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. So thank you for the invitation to the podcast today. I'm Camilo Mejia. I've been nearly 20 years in the energy industry. I'm coming from a corporate background in operations, R&D management. Then I joined the entrepreneurial journey in the U.S. and building technology, supporting energy customers with digital transformation projects. And I joined forces with Rebecca, supporting the consortium. I believe digital technologies and some of them has to be a team effort. So happy to be here talking about before it comes. Thank you. Um, let's uh, un uh, unpack the problem here that, that we're trying to solve, because I think uh, without that understanding, the solution and the, pr the new product doesn't, doesn't, you have to have a context here. So Rebecca, maybe I could just turn to you first. What is the current state of uh, carbon uh, data captured analysis in, in the industry. I mean, you've worked up and down the value chain, so you've got a nice perspective, I think. Yeah, we, we saw this. There's, a, there's an urgent need for accurate, transparent, and verifiable emissions data. Mm -hmm. So today we're introducing the B for E-Carbon solution. We've been working on this for years. Um, this decentralized IoT design approach and development is a testament to the power of consortium work. Um, and then B4E joined forces with another member company, Innovate AI, that we have today, leveraging Innovate's AI expertise, 
in artificial intelligence and machine learning to enhance the solutions capabilities. Camilo, you want to add to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest challenges in the industry and specifically the problem that we want to tackle is the fact that we want climate change, but we don't know how. I think there is a lot of pie in the sky type of projects. We want to kind of join forces, work as a group and make something a reality that is going to be impactful for energy operators when they make environmental claims. And environmental claims is key for regulations, is key for capital markets, is key for insurance, is key for sustainability. So it is a, it's a big ambition that is led by a lot of people. And mm. I have the opportunity to be here with Rebecca talking about it today. Is it, is it fair to say that um, the, the uh, practices of measuring carbon and uh, recording the data so it is transparent and useful uh, is, uh, is not optimal today in the, in the bulk of the industry? I mean, what, is that the essence here? I mean, I understand the, you know, the solution idea to get tackle decarbonization, but what's wrong with the way things are done today? I think there are five issues here that is not actually what we say, it's what we see in the news. The first one, double counting. The second mm -hmm. one, greenwashing. The yeah. third one, transparency issues. The fourth, trust in capital markets. And number five, big, big ambitions from regulations and sustainability goals in the company. So I think that's really the challenges today in the market. Uh, the way how we can get to a better place is by measuring as opposed to guessing or predicting. And, and the, the current, um, uh, as you unpack those five uh, areas uh, of those, uh, which is the one which is the most, uh, if you had to kind of force rank them, is it uh, the lack of trust in the uh, underlying data? I mean, carbon is being measured around the world by all kinds of parties, uh, but, my sense is trust is the big question mark. You don't really know whether the data is reliable, where it came from, its provenance. Is that is that the biggest pin uh, hurdle here? Across the board, yeah. So B4E Carbon is the very first comprehensive emissions management solution yeah. for the entire energy spectrum. That means oil and gas and low carbon. So depending where you are, different kind of classification of the challenges within that ranking, but at the core trust, and I think that's something Rebecca can speak very eloquently <laughs> about it. Yeah, there's there's a lot here to unpack, um, and you see a lot in the news, and mm -hmm. we said, how can we help? And we believe that there's no one company to do this. We have to all come together as an industry and have it as an industry solution, and we need to agree as an industry what is that standard, you know? Um, so we use the IWA, you know, standards. We use um, different types of ways to get there and different technologies because we were completely focused on the problem mm -hmm. and the risk. And we said, how can this newer technology help? Um, and we say it's newer technology, but really this technology has been here for 15 years yeah. or more. It's just a new way to use it. Uh -huh. um, and so bringing this together, we found that we can create a solution that streamlines emissions management by enabling that measurement, reporting, verification, and even digital, uh, digital tradable assets, which is tokenization, which uh -huh. a lot of people aren't ready to talk about. But we have simplified that in a way um, that enables companies now to be able to monetize and be able to move their companies in a way that they weren't able to in the traditional ways and the traditional systems that are put up. And because of blockchain technology, it's things are uh, more reliable, mm -hmm. more secure. The data is immutable, so people can't, you know, um, budge with the data. And so there is building that trust framework. Yeah, I think that's really important. They, uh, the, the, the challenge with the data when it's manually handled and goes through a lot of hands, given uh, various uh, unfortunate incentives built into the system, uh, sometimes uh, the, the data is manipulated in a way that makes it unreliable. And uh, so getting around that, I think, is absolutely key. Go right to the source. And, data. and Jeffrey, the auditability of it, right? Yeah. So now it, you have this audit trail that yeah. no one can tamper with. 
it's super, it's very powerful. Yeah. And uh, there have uh, been some regulations that have uh, uh, been announced. There's two that, uh, that I've uh, read a little bit about, um, SK and SX. Uh, are these driving some of this change? Uh, is there a, uh, some new compliance needs that are coming about? Absolutely, Jeff. I think there is a, a lot of updates to the environmental regulations by the yeah. EPA. There are changes to the disclosure rules by the SEC for public companies when it comes down to scope one and scope two. And I think that's one of the challenges for technology developers in today's environment is not only the pace of innovation, it's also the pace of regulations. Yeah. So yes, I think we are taking into account the need for more precise, accurate disclosure when it comes down to environmental claims, which covers emissions. Now, the, one of the challenges uh, is a phenomenon called claims reversal, which I know has uh, is, is a, uh, something that has triggered um, capital markets to be uh, express their frustration <laughs> with the, uh, uh, the uh, carbon uh, markets. Can you just explain what uh, claims reversal actually is? Absolutely. And actually, to just say something that I wanted to mention when Rebecca was talking about overcoming the challenge of trust, because while solving that kind of challenge around trust, we are now building protection for energy operators in terms of all these kind of environmental claims. Now, uh, the reversal, claim reversals, is something that is really public. It's been more and more in the news for the past three, four weeks. You see really big companies being exposed in terms of carbon credits, in terms of uh, emissions management. So a claim reversal is basically when a public or private company issue a claim saying that they have reduced X amount of CO2 or that they are purchasing X amount of credits. And throughout the audit process, there are so many inconsistencies in terms of the quantity, amount, and source of those claims. So public and private companies, they have to take those claims back and uh, redo it again. And I think that's part of the trust issue, especially when it comes down to capital markets. Yeah, this uh, in Canada, I know there's some discussion in my country about uh, the uh, a looming uh, rule uh, that oil and gas companies that make claims about decarbonization will have to be able to prove every single statement that they make about their positioning um, and failure to do so, they'll be subject to fines. Uh, and so the, the need to uh, t tighten up transparency here is it's a worldwide phenomenon. It's not just an American, uh, American uh, situation. Um, and Jeffrey, this yeah. is the type of tool, this is why we embarked on this to try to help the industry. Yeah, get ahead of this. Uh, yeah. Now there's, uh, uh, tell me about the Interwork Alliance. This has been one of the uh, organization that is uh, working on this. Uh, uh, Rebecca, I think you have some uh, some um, a connection with the Interwork Alliance. Yeah, we've been um, we've had a key. Now the Interwork Alliance is um, a subset of Global Business Blockchain Council. Um, pretty big organization. Now they've been growing for quite a while. Um, and so this is an, an offshoot of those who talk about uh, carbon, they talk about tokenization, digital assets, um, and in that, how to build standards around that, how to build standards around carbon. What is carbon? How do we measure, like, so that we're all talking about the same thing um, in the same way. Um, it doesn't mean that all of this necessarily replaces um, some of these like Project Canary or MIQ or all these others. Um, but I would say that we don't want 16 different registries either because then you have a double counting issue. So we need a industry way to handle this and an industry type, you know, of, of reporting um, way of doing this. And this is where we've really um, honed in and decided this is the part where we can help with. Yeah. Who are the, uh, what are the kinds of companies that are members of, of the Interwork Alliance? Is it, um, is it uh, international? It's large companies. I think Microsoft is, Deloitte is. Um, Camila, who else is on there? There's uh, quite a few companies. Um, but there wasn't anyone from energy. And so wow. blockchain for energy 
you know, has a representative that sits in and makes sure we have a voice ah. for the energy industry. Um, it it's uh, I think Boeing is part of that. There there's many big large companies that are involved um, in in these in driving um, these efforts. Right yes. Now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not just for the energy industry. It's multiple, multiple, uh, multiple industries, industries. Yeah. Yeah. but we need to define this for our industry. Now, I, I, I know that the um, blockchain for energy carbon product uh, is because it has to be able to work within a variety of, of uh, companies. Uh, you, you need to be s s capturing that carbon data at one level, but, but then being able to take it all the way through to tokenization on the other end. There's got to be multiple steps in there. Uh, I wonder yes. if you could walk me through in a high level just what the, what the, what the main components are, the main steps are in, in, in how the product actually works. Absolutely. I think, you know, to go from data source, which is basically the power plant or the oil field, all the way to the marketplace, which is a channel partner for the uh, blockchain for energy consortium. Yeah. The steps are very easy. The first one is capturing the data and customers are capturing data today. The second one is processing that data and that data is being processed for optimization today. We use the same data for operational optimization uh, in order to create this kind of framework that is going to enable the tokenization as well as the reporting through the P4 e carbon. So it's about acquiring the data, it's about processing the data, it's about verifying the data, it's about transforming the data, and it's actually delivering the final tradable asset. And so what exactly is uh, recorded as the tradable asset at the end of the day? Is it a, is it a quantity of carbon produced or not produced? What, what is the actual asset? Absolutely. There are three assets that we are working with today. The first one is REX, Renewable Energy Certificates, and that's actually part of the rollout for this particular version that we are discussing about right. today. Yep. So it's about enhancing renewable power generators to support the claims around the total energy that is being produced from a renewable source. And the REC is basically a kind of tradable asset that there are legal compliance frameworks in order to create value for that particular asset. The second one is carbon removal units. It's basically the total amount of CO2 that is being removed from the atmosphere. Oh. And the last one is CETs, carbon emissions tokens, which is basically the main component for uh, regulatory bodies in the US at least. It's basically the total amount of em emissions right. that you are producing from your activities. So all these cover scope one, scope two emissions. Scope one is direct emissions from the activity of energy production. Yep. Scope two is actually power generation. So that's what we are uh, developing, uh, delivering today to the industry. And I think to connect with what Rebecca was talking about around the standardization process, what we are delivering is a digital asset that has a very clear taxonomy in terms of where it's coming from and how the data is being supported to get to that point that can acquire a value in whether that is the compliance market or the voluntary market. And, so, and uh, I wanted to just touch quickly on your the second uh, one that you, you talked about, which was carbon uh, removed or uh, carbon. Uh, so is this carbon uh, an, a connection into carbon capture or is it direct carbon capture for the air or or carbon captured, say, at a flue stack at a power gen facility? What What is that unit? Absolutely. Carbon removal units is basically total amount of metric tons that you are injecting into a subsurface. So it's carbon uh, sequestration carbon specifically. Storage. Uh, so this will now tie directly to, say, uh, in, uh, in, uh, initiatives in private industry to do carbon capture. You now have a mechanism that you can plug into to prove uh, transparently that you have stored that, that carbon underground. And uh, that s solves the uh, technical problem that those companies will have, which is proving that they've actually accomplished that goal. Absolutely. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the initial value in terms of disclosure when you are dealing with compliance markets. So you can validate the emissions that you are actually reducing. That, that's actually uh, transparency and security of the environmental claims. Yeah. However, before e carbon, the first 
comprehensive emission management solutions is at the middle between the voluntary market and the compliance market. So we just talk about the compliance market, which is security, yeah. transparency, to go and you know discuss IRA or incentives around the uh, carbon injection operations. Yeah. However, the voluntary market has a significant role going forward because by having this security and transparency of the claims, mm -hmm. the price of those claims will increase, which means circular economy around the entire process. Yeah, I think the uh, the the uh, trust factor also has the effect of uh, taking that those particular carbon um, uh, measurements and increasing their value because they have such a high level of audibility and transparency. Uh, there's lots of carbon credits available in the world, but but many of them suffer from poor transparency, poor auditability, poor provenance, and therefore they have a lower value uh, when you go to trade them. Yeah. So this, in this case, we're, we're we're in effect the industry is working to create very high value gilt edged credits, uh, which uh, means that they have much greater interest by capital markets in supporting and purchasing and trading in them. I think I think that's that's the yeah the, one that's of the right the story here yeah uh, and uh, what's been the market's reaction so far to the because uh, the the product was launched in, probably a month ago what was the so uh, what's what's been the the capital market's reaction to the you know, credits that that it's able to generate are they are they treating it as as expected. I think there are three probably takeaways. The first yeah. one is a simple solution for a big issue. <laughs> the system is designed to be plug and play on yeah. top of IoT systems. Yeah. Um, as in, in this particular collaboration, we support the consortium with sort of the uh, awareness in the industry in terms of what the product can achieve. And I think that's the first takeaway. So it's a, it's a simple solution for a big problem. Uh, the second one is basically the capacity to create uh, higher value markets and it's very well received by the low carbon energy producers, especially in early stage. They need to have, <clears throat> they want to have the tool to validate environmental claims mm -hmm. and they can use that to increase bankability profiles, reduce risk profile. So that's the second takeaway. And the third takeaway, which is something we are working on today with Rebecca is the oil and gas industry, that protection that energy, oil and gas operators specifically can get through the B4E carbon solution by having a more precise way of validating emissions, the protection that they can get against all these kind of updates to regulations and fines. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the probe is not really about cost, it's about ROI. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's about the value that you can capture, not just uh, compliance, which implies just pure cost. Now you can actually tr create and capture value. So there's a bit of a, call it a carrot, not just the stick, yeah. you know? So there's there's carrots here, uh, which I think are really, uh, really appealing to energy uh, organizations that you know, can't just download cost continually onto their customers. They have to be able to find ways to offset those costs. Uh, you mentioned um, that there's there's some standards at play here. Uh, to what degree uh, do standards really factor into the success of blockchain for energy carbon? I think, I think they're very yeah. important. Uh, go ahead, so, Camille. <laughs> no, I think the standardization plays a key role in the short and in the long term. <clears throat> in the short term is the transparency. In order to have a standards, you need to know specifically where the data is coming from. Yeah, exactly. So you need to disclose the instruments, you need to disclose a equipment capacity, you need to disclose basically inspection, maintenance. Yeah. So that, that is all the trust layer that we are kind of putting together. And the long term is the capacity, like Rebecca was mentioning, to have an equal language across different markets, which is really the ultimate goal of the long term. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll end up with this fragmented energy market version of carbon and uh, the data center, you know, the uh, artificial, uh, the uh, so, um, big uh, uh, cloud computing companies with their version of carbon and the automotive industry with this version, and, and it just creates a, um, a big challenge for us. So, um, Jeffrey, there's also a technology piece to the standard, right? So, oh. you want to be able to take that digital asset and be, it be transferable to all these different markets and these different platforms. So you'll need 
um, standardization in that to be able to do that. And that's part of that IWA work that they're doing. Uh, to, to allow for that interoperability between these uh, different um, approaches we, to some of the carbon, yeah. Yeah, we believe in free market and we definitely believe that we should be responsible in making sure that what we build is interoperable and transferable. Yeah. You mentioned that um, the transparency is, is really, really important here uh, because that transparency is the what gives the rise to the tr uh, element of the trust. Just how transparent is the data from the a blockchain for energy carbon? Can, can anybody see it or do you need to be a member or like, because you don't want it to be abused, but at the same time, you don't want to lock it down so tightly that, that it becomes uh, uh, completely inaccessible. Yeah, the, the members, this is the beauty of a consortium. Um, so they take that journey with you yeah. and they have a lot of say into, you know, they were very skeptical at first about data, right? Who's going to see my data? How is it protected? Um, and not all blockchains and not all systems and platforms are built the same. You really do need to know how people are building things. And so to have, you know, such great representation of the industry saying these are the standards. We have a technology committee yeah. and that technology committee leaned in. Um, and so we have even policies we've written about data restriction policy, data access policy, like how this thing all works. There's a lot of fundamental things that were done over the years to ensure that data is going to be private where it needs to be private and you have access to share it where it needs to be shared, where it makes sense from a business standpoint. So uh, all of that is taken into consideration and has been built in that way. I, I can see though down the track that as technology evolves and industries change and mature and different, different pressures arise, that the ability to link this data with other data sources could become really valuable. Can you elaborate a little bit around how you see this unfolding in the in the future? An example I could I can easily dream up is uh, remote satellite sensing for methane. We've methane sat was launched recently. And it now provides really good data about methane emissions. How do we? How do? You, how do you see that unfolding? Absolutely, I think that's part of the strategy as well. As a matter of fact, yeah. Rebecca and myself have been working a lot lately. So, uh, in any way, we plan a big rollout for AI technologies, and we'll take into account before it carbon as part of that rollout. We work with a big IoT lean automation company that is deploying the new generation of uh, sensors but trillions, parts per million resolution. We have partnerships with companies developing the new generation of hand uh, kind of uh, deploy uh, methane sensors, drones, robotics. So I think there's a lot of things coming out to the market and, but yeah, that's part of the big picture. In terms of how that grows, I think it's all about the net zero race and also the capacity to incentivize the innovation market. More data, more collaboration always yeah. leads to better Strong approach. It's, it's a very exciting time, um, but I, like let's let's uh, really zero in now on the actual value proposition. You, see, you, you touched at the start. Here's the five challenges we're trying to solve. Uh, but I, I'm going to put my hard-nosed oil executive hat on and go, show me the money. Like, where's the value here? What what is the what is the value of of uh, that that you can point to? From a financial standpoint, it's either cost of ROI. <clears throat> if you go with the market today, it's cost, it's exposure, it's risk. If you go with B4E, the first comprehensive emissions management solution, you are talking about ROI, you're talking about protection, you're talking about climate change. Uh, but, uh, Rebecca, what are your thoughts on that that value? What, what's the, what, what do you say to, say, a, an organization who wants to plug in or become a member of uh, Blockchain for Energy. What, where's the story here? Yeah, this is a network effect, right? So um, there is a power in the network yeah. and there's this um, exponential um, ROI that we're seeing that's, that's going to play out here because it is a reduction in your costs. It is also, though, you able to monetize um, in a real-time manner. Um, 
So that is enormous, um, which I don't think we have in today's uh, process. So um, being able to pick it straight, you know, we said this is an end to end system. And if you can pick it straight up from, you know, the sensors or how they're coming in and be able to take it to market immediately, to me, that's a giant ROI um, that that's unheard. So we're actually working with some market companies now to be able to API straight into them. So that data, it just goes in. Um, but let me make this really clear to everyone. You own your carbon data. <laughs> and <Yeah>. so, <laughs> you know, um, but this this is the vehicle. Like, this is the vehicle of the future for today's usage. So it's quite exciting. Um, I see, you know, the companies are seeing this and getting very excited about it. Uh, it is a journey. This is something that, does not exist um we've yeah. had to create a process so most of the things we've done in the consortium was oh let's figure out the as is and then how the digital transformation is going to be in the to be i mean we've had to create our new to be because there was no as is <laughs> yeah well it was yeah. if there was it was highly fragmented and dysfunctional Very. it's not something you would actually build a business yeah. around so yeah got to build it from scratch if people want to learn more about this um, uh, new product where do they where do they go rebecca so we have a product page we've just put up on um, so if they go to www.blockchainforenergy.net we're a .net. network yep not .net um, there is a B for E Carbon product page. You can contact Innovate AI. Um, they are helping, you know, roll this out with Blockchain for Energy. Um, so we're super excited about all the hard work that's been done. Like I said, it's still a journey. Um, come join us. Come join, yes. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. It's been very exciting to learn about this, Rebecca and uh, Camille. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for your time. This has been another episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. If you like what you've seen or heard, uh, please press the like button and uh, or better yet, share this with your community so that others can find this content. And I'll return with another episode in the very near future. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.